Here's a guy who thinks that atheists should be aware that the traditional Abrahamic conception of God is not the only God in which theists believe, as if we didn't already know. Hey all, Mason Menega here. If you watched enough of my videos, you probably have figured out by now that conservative Christians annoy me. They're the kind of people who would go to the urinal right next to you, even though there are plenty of other empty ones, and ask you, do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? But almost equally as annoying are fundamentalist atheists who would start peeing in the urinal you're peeing in and ask, have you ever read our personal Lord and Savior, Richard Dawkins? Very few contemporary atheists, even the most aggressive ones, care about Richard Dawkins. Many of us don't even like Richard Dawkins. Nonetheless, apologists can't seem to stop bringing him up as though he's the Pope of atheism. There are so many atheists who are just as certain about their beliefs as fundamentalist Christians. But have these atheists ever thought that their understanding of theism might be wrong? Obviously, fundamentalist Christians are wrong about why they believe God exists. But is it possible that many atheists could also be wrong, not just about why they believe God does not exist, but also peeing right next to you in a public bathroom? It's been my experience that only boomers do that. And not only will they pee right next to you, they will think it appropriate to start a conversation with you midstream. Before talking about three things atheists get wrong about theism, I first want to mention that I don't believe all atheists get theism wrong. There are many atheists who have very good reasons to believe God does not exist. There are good reasons to believe God does not exist, like how can an all-good and all-powerful God allow evil, or the band Skillet in the world. I've never heard of Skillet. Are they worse than Trapped? But despite good reasons to not believe in God, there are many other atheists who don't just seem to not believe in God, but they also are against God. They're not just atheists, they are anti-theists. It's these kind of atheists I'm talking about in this video and who are the ones who pee right next to you when there are other open toilets. I'm not an anti-theist, but even when it comes to anti-theists, I don't think all of them misunderstand God or are unaware that there are more conceptions of God than just the traditional Abrahamic ones. These atheists seem so certain about their belief that God does not exist, and in the process, they completely misunderstand theism. A person does not even need to be an atheist to be an anti-theist. If Satan exists, he's an anti-theist without being an atheist. So here are three things these atheists get wrong about theism. The first thing many atheists get wrong about theism is that the existence of God is a metaphysical question, not a scientific one. Metaphysical questions are ultimately semantic questions. Such questions ask about the meaning of certain basic concepts, like what do we mean when we talk about reality and existence? You might be wondering, Mason, what does the existence of God have to do with metaphysical things like crystals, being a Libra, and tarot cards? Now I'm curious what this dude means when he uses the word metaphysical, because all of the things he listed are physical, not metaphysical. Tarot cards are made of matter. Maybe the folks he's imagining would ask these questions believe that metaphysical is a synonym for magical. So when I'm talking about metaphysical questions, I'm not talking about questions like, does my boyfriend suck because he's a Leo? I'm talking about the questions about the fundamental nature of reality. How is reality structured? That's not a metaphysical question, that's a physical question. How could the structure of anything, let alone reality, be metaphysical? What is existence? Now this, I think, is a metaphysical question. It asks us to unpack the semantic meaning of the concept of existence. As best as I can discern, to say that something exists is to say that it has location in space-time. I don't understand what it means to say that something exists if it doesn't have location in space-time. That's why I rarely understand what it means to say that a god exists, because most definitions of god say that he either exists without having location in space-time, or that his existence extends beyond space-time, neither of which are recognizably coherent to me. What causes things to happen? I don't understand how that is a metaphysical question. If this dude had said, what is causation, then I could see that as a metaphysical question. But I don't understand how the answer to the question, what causes things to happen, could be anything other than physical. But usually questions about God's existence are talked about as scientific questions, not metaphysical ones. I suspect that this has a lot to do with the fact that many apologists, even the ones who are not fundamentalist Christians, insist that there is scientific evidence for God's existence. They insist, for example, that the Big Bang is scientific evidence that the universe must have been created. Usually atheists ask questions like, what is the scientific proof that there is a God? 
as if a scientist could hypothesize the existence of God, run tests, and then make a conclusion about if God exists on the result of the tests. We're talking about God, not a lab rat. Why would anyone think God's existence could be proven scientifically if we are talking about the God of the universe? Would it be possible that God may not exist exactly the same way a lab rat exists? Are there different ways of existing? To say that a lab rat exists is to say that it has location in space-time. If God exists in some different way, what is that different way? I don't understand what it means to say that something exists if it doesn't exist in the way that a lab rat does. So it might be a bit challenging to test the existence of God. Then on what basis can God's existence be determined? How can his existence be discerned from his non-existence? How can we tell the difference between the existence and non-existence of a God? So there are many atheists who make the mistake of thinking that the question of the existence of God is a scientific question, when it actually is a metaphysical question. I think a much more interesting question than, does God exist, is, can God fit in your understanding of metaphysics? In other words, given how you understand the fundamental nature of reality, can God fit in that? In my particular case, the answer is no, at least with respect to any conception of God which says that he exists independent of or beyond space-time. My metaphysical understanding of existence is that it means having location in space-time. Many apologists, and not just the fundamentalist ones, believe that God either has no location in space-time or that his existence extends beyond space-time. Neither of those ideas are recognizably coherent to me. Now, when I say this, I commonly get accused of inferring that it isn't coherent merely because I can't recognize it as such. That is not, in fact, my argument. I'm simply saying that because I can't recognize it as coherent, I can't believe in it, even if it is coherent and true. Alfred North Whitehead was an early 20th century mathematician and philosopher, and he developed an entire metaphysics that he called philosophy of organism. And even though he was a well-educated mathematician, he proposed that within his metaphysics that God makes sense in a philosophy of organism. Whitehead's notion of God was a panentheist one, which says that God is the universe, the space-time continuum, plus something extra, something beyond space-time. That's the bit that I cannot recognize as coherent. What does it mean for something to exist beyond space-time? Beyond is a spatial orientation. To say that something exists beyond space itself is therefore a contradiction. So he believed in God. Although after I do math, I definitely stop believing in God. So many atheists get theism wrong by thinking that the question of God's existence is a scientific question, where they think God's existence can be scientifically proven. Instead, these atheists should begin to recognize that the question of God's existence is actually a metaphysical question about if God makes sense given how they understand the nature of reality. He doesn't, by the way. The second thing many atheists get wrong about theism is that not all theists are fundamentalist Christians. When many atheists debate theists, they assume all theists believe in the same kind of God. Atheists are obviously atheists to the fundamentalist Christian understanding of God. But I'm a theist, and I'm an atheist to that understanding of God too. A perfect example of this is when Bill Nye debated fundamentalist Christian and man who clearly didn't evolve from apes, Ken Ham. Given that the Ham on Nye debate was about whether evolution occurred rather than about whether a god exists, I fail to see how it is a perfect example of what you're talking about. But the thing is, many Christians don't even understand God the same way as Ken Ham. Since it was a debate about whether the theory of evolution is true and not about whether a god exists, Bill Nye could have been a theist, maybe even an old earth creationist, and still made most, if not all, of the same arguments. Maybe I'm too much of a sports bro, and you can see that I was. But wouldn't atheists want to show off how much better atheism is than theism by debating the best understandings of God? Bill Nye debating Ken Ham is like NBA players playing against kids. How did you even get the impression that the debate between Bill Nye and Ken Ham was a debate about whether God exists? The title of the debate was, Is Creation a Viable Model of Origins? That's not the same thing as a debate about whether any God exists. The third and final thing that atheists get wrong about theism is that there are many other theisms than the fundamentalist Christian understanding of theism. That doesn't seem to be meaningfully distinct from the second thing. I want to mention a few I think are pretty interesting, and maybe, if you're an atheist, you would find them pretty interesting as well, especially in comparison to the fundamentalist Christian understanding of God. One interesting kind of theism is pantheism. The pan in pantheism means all, and obviously the theism in pantheism means God. 
So the word pantheism literally means all is God. In other words, it is the belief that the universe and reality is identical to God. Insofar as this is a merely semantic distinction, I can say that I believe in the pantheist God. Insofar as pantheists simply use the word God to mean the universe or reality, then it's pretty clear that God, by that definition, exists. However, pantheists tend not to merely use the word God to just mean the universe or reality. Rather, they often insist that the universe or reality or both are conscious and have desires, and that the universe actively and consciously influences the things that happen to us. Insofar as they believe that, I am not convinced. At the very least, we'd have to be able to run some kind of Turing test on the universe in order to convince me that the universe is conscious. So the tree in your backyard and your own anus are God. Although some anuses are more holy than others. Pantheism can be found in tribal religions throughout the world. So it is a very old theism. Perhaps, but I worry that this dude might be conflating pantheism with animism, which is not the same thing. But pantheism can also be found within Christianity. Meister Eckhart was a Catholic mystic in the Middle Ages, and he was arguably a pantheist. There was also Giordano Bruno, who was an Italian friar who was one of the first people to propose that the sun was not the center of the universe. He also was a pantheist, and in typical Catholic Church fashion, he was burned at the stake for his belief in pantheism. Another interesting kind of theism is panentheism. Before you say, Mason, you literally just talked about this one. Yes, it does sound similar, but I added a little N in the middle. Panentheism. Again, pan means all, and the N means in, and obviously theism means God. So it means all is in God. Yeah, this seems to be just as incoherent to me as the conception of God which says that he is timeless and spaceless. To say that God exists beyond or in addition to or independent of space-time seems like a contradiction to me. I don't understand what it means for something to exist without having location in space-time. So I don't understand what it means for the existence of anything to be independent of or beyond space-time. As best as I can conceive, space-time is the boundary of existence itself. So while pantheism is all is God, panentheism is all is in God. See how there's a slight difference? Panentheism says that there is a difference between God and the world, so they are not identical like they are in pantheism. But in panentheism, God and the world are in a mutual relationship with one another, so it seems like God and the world might be one. Just like pantheism, panentheism has been around for a long time too. Many early Neoplatonists were panentheists. One of the most famous panentheists was Jewish philosopher Baruch Spinoza, who lived in the 17th century. Many current-day Christian, Muslim, Jewish, Buddhist, and Hindu process theologians are also panentheists. The last interesting kind of theism I want to talk about is polytheism. Even though non-monogamous people on Twitter make you think poly means annoying, it actually means many. And again, theism means God. So the word polytheism literally means many gods. So it is the belief that there are many gods. Polytheism was the dominant form of theism before monotheistic religions like Christianity, Judaism, and Islam came to prominence. In fact, early Judaism was polytheistic. The reason the first commandment says, Thou shalt not have any gods before me, is because early Israelites believed that there were, in fact, other gods. The first commandment is telling Israelites not to prioritize any of those other gods above Yahweh. If whoever wrote that commandment wanted people to be monotheistic, he wouldn't have told people not to prioritize other gods over Yahweh. He would have said in that commandment that there are no other gods. Today, many religions are still polytheistic including Taoism, traditional African religions, and Wicca. You may be an atheist who still does not find any of these theisms compelling enough to be a pantheist, panentheist, or polytheist. And it's okay not to be a panentheist, except that you're wrong. Well, if not believing in seemingly self-contradictory claims makes me wrong, then I don't want to be right. But I think atheists should at least be aware of these types of theisms and realize how they are very different than the fundamentalist Christian theism. So when atheists argue about how they don't believe in God, they should be clear the God that they don't believe in is a God that many other theists, including myself, don't believe in as well. Yeah, but I don't believe in any of the other gods you listed either, so I'm not sure what you're trying to teach me here.
everyone who helps me out on Patreon. You're a big help. Thanks so much.